Here is grade seven, module one, lesson one. Our I can statement for this lesson is that I can explain why relationships presented in tables, diagrams, and verbal descriptions can or cannot be represented by a constant unit rate. So what we are going to work on today is that constant unit rate. Here is the reteach that is available in Into Math. Um, it starts with some vocabulary. So here we have rate. A rate is a ratio that compares two quantities measured in different units. So for example, we have like miles per gallon. Okay, something like that, miles per gallon. Um, and we also have unit rate. And that is a rate in which the second quantity in the comparison is one unit. So that's the big piece in this one is that it's one unit. So miles per one gallon. Uh, rate can be two different units, doesn't have to be to the one in the denominator. And then we have constant rate. And a relationship is said to have a constant rate if the unit rate for all quantities in the relationship is the same. So that is what we're going to explore today. Um, here we have a table that shows how many pounds of a certain dog food you get when buying bags of dog food. So we're comparing pounds to in each bag. So here we have eight pounds in two bags, and then 16 to four, 24 to six, 32 to eight, 40 to 10. If we compare these, we have eight over two, 16 over four. Again, we're comparing pounds to the bags, 24 to six, 32 to eight, and 40 to 10. And what do we notice about all these if we simplify them? Pause if you need to, do a little division. All of those end up equaling four, every single one. Okay, and that's what we found here. Because each one of these ends up equaling four, that means it is, it has that constant rate that we talked about in our vocabulary. So yes, the unit rate is the same for every entry in the table. So the constant rate is four pounds per bag. When you are working with unit rates, you wanna make sure that you know what you're finding. What are your units? What's in our denominator? And then what's in, or I'm sorry, our numerator, and then what's in our denominator. All right, here we have Charlie, who's doing a little babysitting. And we're trying to figure out um, if this relationship is a constant rate. So here we have the amount of money Charlie earned for babysitting is given in the table. Can the relationship be described by a constant rate? So we are trying to figure out the dollars per hour, the rate per hour. So here we have $45 for three hours of work. $75 for five hours of work, and $120, again, always knowing what these numbers are talking about, for eight hours of work. Do a little division inside of your paper here. Pause if you need to, five into 75, eight into 120, what does that end up looking? And when we do this, we end up realizing that this is $15 per one hour. And that it is the same, it is the constant $15 per one hour and $15 per one hour there as well. So what we got is yes, the ratio of dollars 
earned two hours worked. is constant. For every part of our table that's given, it is the same amount. And that is that $15 per hour. All right, here we have a molecular structure of water. The ratio of hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms in water is always the same. So here they tell us, when we read through our problem here, the ratio is always the same. So it is constant. How many oxygen atoms are there when there are eight hydrogen atoms? So we're writing out our ratio here, write out what we know. We have two oxygen atoms for every, I'm sorry, one oxygen atom. One oxygen atom for every two hydrogen atoms. And we're trying to figure out how many oxygen atoms there are when we have eight hydrogen. Now we could, that's not super, um, not a super high number. We could draw this out. We have, ooh. We have one, two already, and then let's see, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and one more, seven, and eight. So when we figure that out, we see that we have one, two, three, four, four oxygen. Um, but what we can also do, if this number were bigger, we would wanna know how to solve this without having to draw pictures. Say there was 200 or something like that involved, a much bigger number. We would wanna identify what the relationship is between these two ratios here. So two, how are we going to get from two to eight? What operation could we do? And what would we, what number would be involved? Pause if you need to talk about it. We're going to need to multiply by four. That's going to be our constant here times four. And that would get us our four oxygen atoms. So there are four oxygen atoms four oxygen atoms for every eight hydrogen atoms all right and that is it for our lesson one from module one grade seven